You know, I think everyone has kind of a superpower for you, whether that's like cooking or gardening or woodworking, or maybe it's your particular job, whatever you do, or maybe it's maybe it's parenting, something like that. And, and for me, I think a lot of people just kind of assume that my superpower, quote unquote, is playing the piano. And, and that's really not the case. I am not the world's greatest pianist or anything like that. I would say my superpower and, and what I enjoy really most of all is, is teaching piano, not actually playing piano. So one of my favorite things to, to see with my students is when they actually kind of surpass my abilities on the piano. And so I noticed one of my students, she would uh, regularly post videos of her playing in the community for piano in 21 days. And after about six months, I was like, man, this, she's, she's amazing. Like I can't do the things that she's doing. This is incredible. So I really wanted to dive into that story and, and learn a little bit more about her. And that's what we're doing here in this video. But real quick, if you're new here, I'm Jacques Hopkins, and this is Piano in 21 Days, where we help regular people learn to play their favorite songs on the piano in as little time as possible. So if that sounds good to you, please consider giving this video a like and go ahead and click subscribe to the channel. All right, so Teresa, she's amazing. She's amazing at the piano. So I, uh, I sat down with her or I guess you know, I stood up. I kind of stand up when I play piano and when I'm talking to the camera most of the time. And uh, we had a conversation on Zoom. I just wanted to dive into her story a little bit and understand like what her, her goals were, what her motivations were, what some of her obstacles, roadblocks are, were, and, and some of her advice uh, for, for some of you out there in the learning process, because she's been able to accomplish a lot in just like six months time. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and roll to the full conversation between myself and Teresa. Hey, Teresa, thanks so much for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. How are you? Let's, I, well, I'm doing great. I'm doing <laughs> great. Uh, I, I, I really admire the uh, background you have going there with the, the shiplap and the green plant. Uh, I wish I could have a background like that. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Maybe maybe you've got piano teacher in your future as well. <laughs> we didn't plan this, though. <laughs> No, certainly not. So let's let's start here. Um, wh what were what, kind of what what are the things that that went through your life, whether immediately or just like I don't know if it's been since you were a kid or what, but like what led up to your decision to want to 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 take a program like piano in twenty one days? Sure. So um, I took a few years of traditional piano lessons as a kid, and kind of a similar background to you. Um, was just frustrated with my progress and how long it took to learn a song, you know, a matter of months to perfect one song. And um, I love piano, but when I was doing it that way, it just wasn't in enjoyable for me. Um, I respect traditional pianists and classical music. It's beautiful, it's tough. Um, and I tried to pick it up again several times after that but it just, it just didn't fulfill me and it was quite successful, um, which is why I ultimately stopped playing. But I love piano. One of my favorite things to do is go to a dueling piano bar and just, you know, listen to the pianist take requests. And I was always just in awe of, you know, they would just look at a slip of paper and, you know, maybe check their phone or something really quick and just be able to play a song without any sheet music. Um, and now I know from your course, that was probably, they used a chord progression app or ultimate guitar. Um, that and just being envious of my brothers who are musicians as well, you know, they would come over for the holidays and just be able to play music without any, without any sheet notes. And I'm like, how are they doing that? Um, I could always kind of play by ear, but just with my right hand. So, you know, that's kind of boring. So I, I kind of searched, um, you know, pandemic was something to do. I needed a hobby. We had to stay home. Right. So I kind of searched how to do improv piano lessons. And that's when I stumbled upon your course. And I looked through, there was kind of like a sample packet. And I was like, oh, wow, this, this looks pretty good. And I looked through it and it just, 
really gave me the tools from being able to play, you know, just with my right hand to different advanced um, chords. And hey, now I know what to do with my left hand too. So it went from being able to play just a few notes on a key with my right hand by ear to being able to fill in actual um, beautiful music. Going back to the the kind of childhood piano lessons, how long would you say it was that you that you did that? How many years? Um, I'd say about four or five years. There were probably some breaks in between. You know, I did something really young and then maybe took a break. I, I took about a maybe a year or two of clarinet. Um, I did percussion and drums for a couple years as well, and then found a different piano teacher, attempted it again, um, and it just it wasn't for me that way. It was just, I found it more stressful than anything and actually kind of made me a little bit anxious. So I just, you know, I, I put that in, on hold. You know, um, they're, they're not all bad, right? For me, no. like I, I, I often like, you'll, you'll find me bashing traditional piano lessons because it's kind of good for my current brand, but it's certainly not all bad. I did have positive yeah. experiences yeah. Um, with it, or I would have never, you know, discovered this approach to playing. I would have, I would have just completely given up and try instead of trying to find this way to play. Mm -hmm. So for you, like, what is it that you did enjoy about your childhood piano lessons? Um, I mean, I just love piano. I love the way that it sounds. It's the most beautiful instrument and it, it doesn't matter, you know, what you're playing. If you're playing classical music, if you're playing, you know, jazz, Scott Joplin or anything like that, it's just such a beautiful, soothing um, instrument. I just really, really, I loved piano and I just, I really just wanted to make music. Just, I didn't know how or, you know, at, at what capacity. I just knew that doing it the tra traditional way just wasn't giving me the results that I one in, I just wasn't as happy playing as I am this way. What about sheet music? What was your relationship like with sheet music? <laughs> if you ask me about sheet music now, um, frustration is one word that comes to mind. I was never able to memorize a song and be able to play without sheet music. Like I would always have to have the sheet music and still to this day, if I have sheet music in front of me, I'm, I'm going back to my basics, right? I'm like, every good boy deserves fudge. And I can't just sit down with sheet music and be able to play a song from start to finish. It just, it, it takes a lot. It's really tough. Okay. So, so you love music. You've got a family who loves music as well. Uh, you you kind of saw the potential, but, but the, the way that you were going about learning as a kid, just you discovered wasn't really working for you. Fortunately, yeah. you knew there was other ways to go. You know, you enjoy going to piano bar, dueling piano bars and whatnot. Um, the pandemic, everybody's home, by the way, a lot, a lot of people signed up for the course during like during those initial few weeks of the lockdowns, just like, like yourself, like people are home and, yeah. you know, kudos to you because a lot of people just sat and like binge Netflix and you took it upon yourself to, you know, find a, find a program and actually learn piano. So you, um, you did kind of the freebie, you decided you're going to sign up. Like, what was your, what was your, um, experience like through the course? Was it, was it all just like rainbows and butterflies? Were there obstacles and how long did it take you? Um, so it took me about, I would say six months to reach what you call unconscious competence. I believe if I'm saying that correct. Yes. Um, but that is not for every key. So for instance, if I'm playing in C major, that's pretty easy for me. I can play intuitively, um, pretty much any song in C major, but if it is a, um, you know, key with more sharps in it, it's a little bit more difficult for me. So I'm still, you know, working through that and that's going to take more time and patience, but for C major, um, you know, playing arpeggios, inversions, fourth chords, suspended chords, any of those advanced chords, um, I am able to do really without thinking about it. It just, it flows. If I look at a song, I may not always play it the same way, but it sounds good. It sounds beautiful. Um, my biggest obstacle in the course, um, was probably the arpeggios that took a lot of time for me, just the timing, be able to being able to play with the right hand and the left hand. I do think traditional le lessons definitely helped me out in that, in that way, just the hand eye coordination, but it did take me a long time. I really had to slow it down, um, play in, I mean, slow motion, just repetitive over and over again to get it. And then, you know, once I got it, it was, it was like second nature to me. And I, I use it in pretty much every song now. Awesome. So for, for anybody watching this, 
And they're like, wait, unconscious competence. Like, what is that? Let me, let me explain that really quickly. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you brought it up, but we talked yeah. about in the course, the four stages of learning, right? The first stage is, um, conscious incompetence and, um, or sorry, the first stage is actually un unconscious, <laughs> unconscious, uh, incompetence. That means you don't even know that you don't know how to do something. And I, and I tell people inside the course, like you're already past this stage because you know what a piano is. Right. And by the way, I have a piano right here. It's like just off camera. I'm pointing to it. There it is. I could have pointed to these two over here as well. So you know what a piano is, but you, but you, and you know, um, but you don't, you know that you don't know how to play it. That's stage two of the learning process, which is conscious incompetence. You're aware that you don't know how to do something. So that's kind of where you were when you, when you signed up for the course, uh, I guess a little over a year ago now. And the start, the third stage is um, conscious competence where you can do it, but it, it takes quite a bit of effort. It's not second nature. Use those words. Right. And so um, you said it took you about six months to get all the way to unconscious competence where, I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal that I want for people when they're learning piano is that it's very comfortable. It's mostly second nature. We're not having to think too, too hard. We let the, the music just kind of starts to flow within us. And I would say getting to that point within six months is pretty amazing. I, I don't expect people to get there in 21 days. It's very possible to get to the third stage of learning in 21 days. Yeah. That fourth stage can take, can take quite a while and we mm -hmm. never stop learning. Um, for you, like, was there a moment that you felt like you realized you had gotten to that point? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would just be playing a song and then all of a sudden I would play something that sounded really, really good and really beautiful. And I was like, Ooh, what did I do? I need to start recording <laughs> myself so I can then go back and figure out what I did and kind of make myself notes so I can do it again. So at that point I had known that it just, it was just happening. It was just second nature. It was just kind of flowing without really, you know, thinking about something. And did you have to, did you have to like practice every single day for six months or did you ever take time off? Oh, I practiced a lot. Um, I had a lot of time. So <laughs> I would say, um, several hours a day, you know, there's days that I work 12 hour shifts. There was about three days a week. I worked 12 hour shifts. So on those days, even on those days, honestly, coming home after work, I would sit down at the piano and my husband would be like, you need to stop, you need to go to bed. <laughs> um, but I just became so involved and engrossed in the, in the course and how happy I was with how quickly I was progressing that it was just, I would sit down and play piano and then all of a sudden, you know, three hours would pass by. And, but that's how enjoyable it is to me. Like, you know, when I was a child, my mom would have to positive reinforce it in me she's like you finish the song and I'll give you a Hershey kiss <laughs> you know <laughs> that's what she did when I was young and now it's like just playing the music is reinforcement enough for me that I can just sit down and play for hours and it's just like where did the time go it's just that enjoyable for me yeah that's that's really great now I want to go back to something um that you said a little bit earlier when you were talking about, okay, in six months, you were able to do this. You, you mentioned that certain being able to play songs in certain keys were either easier than other keys. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure a lot of people watching this will understand like C major is for the most part, kind of the easiest key to play a song in. Right. And for most people, like the more black notes within the key, um, mm -hmm. the more difficult it can be. Um, but what you said was that you got to a point where you could play, this was your quote, pretty much any song in the key of C major. Yes. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this are like, wait, what? Like, there's like an infinite number of songs out there. Like, can you, can you explain that a little further into like what all you're able to play now? Yeah. So just the different, you know, um, so if you look at a key, you know, you talk about keys and scales and what are the different, you know, um, notes in each scale. Um, so there's, yeah, there's not a lot of, sh there's not sharps involved in that scale. And so if I go onto Google or ultimate guitar and I just look at a list, I'll, I'll search for songs in C major. Um, and you know, I'll pick songs that are, are familiar to me and it's just, I'm so well practiced and rehearse in those different chords and um, the different inversions of each chord and the sustain, um, you know, the force and the second chords and everything that it's just, it's very easy to put a song together and you're just, you're using the same chords. They're just, the progression is just in a different order. So it's, it's the same thing over and over and over again. And you'll, you'll memorize it. It's just each song. It's just in a, it's just in a different order. And it's just, um, you know, you can put, put it, piece it together that way. Yeah. I mean, if the song is in the key of C major, then most of the time it's going to have um, 
some combination of like six courts basically. And that's, I think that's what you're alluding to there is, is it might have three, four five or six of those six. And then in a certain order, but if it's in the, if it's in the key of C, then it's just, it's just kind of a grab bag among those six. Mm -hmm. right? And it's a lot easier to um, memorize that way as well. Mm -hmm. Memorize a song when it's clustered together, when you're thinking of them as, chords than if you're thinking of them as individual notes as you would be with sheet music. Yes, I agree. So what are, what are one or two of your favorite songs to play today? Um, anything Elton John um, or Billy Joel. Those mm -hmm. are my kind of two favorites and the, the Beatles as well. But um, I'm trying to make it my goal to do all the Elton John songs that I can. Awesome. You have any, you have any goals of being the, uh, a musician at the dueling piano bar? <laughs> um, maybe, <laughs> maybe one day we'll see. I have a little bit of performance anxiety. Although I will say that having the, the student center on Facebook is really nice. I think that has helped a lot with my confidence and I would encourage all your students to make sure that they're involved on that. Just, you know, seeing other people uh, post progress videos and there's, you know, pianists of all different skill levels. So I think that really helped me come out of my shell for me to record a song and post on the piano center, that is, that is huge for me. So that's maybe not the purely the um, dueling piano bar one day, but certainly per posting a video on Facebook or social media was a big deal for me. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because to be honest with you, you know, you've, you've posted videos of yourself in that group several times <laughs> now, and some of yours are like some of the most like interacted and commented videos that, that have ever been there. So <laughs> it's interesting to hear that, you know, from, from what I've seen, you're really inspiring other people, but that you, for you to say that you were inspired by other people in that group is, is really cool to hear. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. all different talents too. people singing while they're playing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you. You don't, you don't sing while you play, correct? I, I have not figured that out yet. First I can sing a song separately and then I can play a song separately. But when I start to sing and play at the same time, there's just some hesitation putting it all together. Um, so I've actually tried playing a song and then recording it over a voiceover afterwards. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. I would love to do it all at once. And I think if I play more just basic chords with root note in my left hand and not arpeggios, I may be able to sing a little bit, but <laughs> as soon as I put, you know, some of the complexity into it and the more advanced chords, it just, it's hard to juggle it all at once. So I really admire those that can do it all together. It's really tough. I completely agree. Now, do you play any other instruments? Um, not regularly. When I was a, a child, I did do percussion. I was in middle school band. So I played a little uh, xylophone and marimba. I played clarinet. I played um, snare. So just kind of different, whatever they needed me for in percussion. Um, but piano is the only thing that I'm playing now. Gotcha. So what, what, do you, what do your friends and family think of what you've been able to do? Uh, my brothers love it. <laughs> they're so they're in Connecticut right now and I'm in, in North Carolina. So they're just waiting so we can get together and get some sort of jam session now that <laughs> I can play, you know, just looking up ultimate guitar app, which is probably what they use for chord progressions as well. So, um, they're stoked about it. Um, my mom definitely likes that I'm back in, into piano. Um, her and my grandmother, or my grandparents are the ones that paid for my traditional piano lesson. So she knows she's more of the mindset. She's like, make sure you go back and play your classical um, sheet music and your, your fur lease and your, you know, Beethoven <laughs> and all that. And which Excellent yeah. grandmother uh, uh, impression. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> which I respect. Obviously, I think classical music is definitely beautiful. And I, I listen to it if I'm trying to meditate or concentrate or, you know, study or anything. But for me, it's just... Um, playing this way and playing like a classic rock musician would is just, that's more fulfilling for me. So um, they're happy if I'm happy. Yeah, very good. So at this point, you know, you consider yourself um, a piano player. You, 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 I'm sure you would tell people that now, you know how to play piano. You specifically use those words, unconscious competence. So <laughs> what does actually like sitting down at your piano look like today? Like, are you doing any drills? Are you doing any exercises? Or are you just sitting down and making music? Like, what does it look like for you now? 
It, it depends. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go back through all the songs that I learned in your course and I'll just keep improving on them. You know, each time I do something and I, I, I learn something else or, you know, I play something, I'm like, Oh, that sounds good. I need to record it and see what it sounds like. Again, I will go through um, the music that I've played in the past and see if I can kind of build and improve on that. Um, and then also it's just really, you know, sometimes I'll just be listening to music in my car and, or, you know, at work and I'm like, oh, I want to play that song. So I'll jot down the song and then I'll go back after work or on, on my day off and look at the chords on ultimate guitar and then I'll, I'll start to go for it. Um, so really anything, I'll just be like, oh, I want to play that and I'll, I'll, you know, sit down and work on it. Awesome. All right. Last, uh, last question for you, Teresa here. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be asking you for some advice. So for those that are um, not where you are, they're, they're in the learning process, whether the, whether they're taking the piano in 21 days course or not, you know, they're more yeah. at the beginning, beginning stages of this. They're hearing this conversation. They've seen you play maybe like, ah, oh, I just don't know that I could ever get there. You know, what, what is your advice for somebody that kind of was where you were about a year ago? I would just say, um, you know, be patient, practice and, go at your own pace. There's no, you know, strict guidelines that you have to go by. There's, there's no, you know, you have your own goals that you set for yourself, but really just go slow practice. If you're frustrated, take a break, you know, go back to it later. Um, and just do what makes you happy. Don't worry about what other people think, um, you know, if someone else is critiquing you, whether it be a family member that you're, you know, not playing in the traditional way, just do what makes you happy. If you're, if you're happy with what you're doing and happy with the process, then, um, you know, just go for it. Take your, take your time and, and, and don't, and don't rush. Awesome. Thanks for that. Thank, thanks for, uh, thanks for being so generous with your time today. And for, you know, I, I mentioned you've already inspired other people and I'm sure you'll inspire people more with this conversation. So, uh, once again, thanks Teresa and, uh, just awesome. work overall. Thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you for this course. It was, a, it was great. <laughs> It's my, my pleasure. It's, uh, it's, it's the thing that I love doing the most is not playing the piano, but teaching people like you how to play. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you again to Teresa for uh, being so generous with her time and sharing that with, with both my, myself and, and you all out there. Uh, there's no question that, that she was committed and devoted. You can't just snap your fingers and learn piano. You can't just sign up for a program and that's, that's all it takes to, to learn piano. She, she took six months practicing for what she said at times hours a day. And that's how committed and motivated she was. And now you don't necessarily have to take it to that extreme, but you've got to follow a proven program and stick with it. And maybe for you, that's 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day. Eventually you will get there. And so if you need something to help you get started and maybe your story could be similar to Teresa's one day, I do have a free, completely free workbook that is waiting for you over at piano in 21 days.com. It's called learn 36 popular songs in five days. So if that sounds good to you, then why don't you jump over there or you can click the link on this page. I hope you go and do that. And I look forward to being your piano teacher.